Jack Nicholas Golf is a golf game that somehow manages to be worse than every other golf game that came out before it on the Super Nintendo. It's impressive how unoptimized loading into the course is. It's like very gradually opening a pop-up book, besides the fact that most pop-up books are actually pleasant to look at. I had a Dinotopia pop-up book when I was a kid that I loved. I wonder if they ever made a Dinotopia video game. I also wonder if those books were actually good or if I only liked them as a kid because I was a kid. I don't know. Anyway, uh, back to this game that is way less interesting than Dinotopia. Most of the human pixel art looks like my sleep paralysis demons. The UI looks bad. It's hard to understand how exactly what you're doing affects your shots, especially with the red part at the top of the power bar, which I'm pretty sure going into the red means your shot will go farther than the inner face says it will, but you're going to be punished worse for poor accuracy. But this game is not actually good enough for me to legitimize spending the time to try to figure this out. The aiming is the absolute worst part of this experience. I think moving that ball at the top of the interface does something with your aiming, but I honestly can't even be sure. You don't have an easily accessible overhead map from what I can tell. You have to menu into it, so it's effectively useless when you're trying to take a shot. The point of view of the shot, like on the golf course, it feels off to me. I don't know, the other golf games I've played for the Super Nintendo actually feel like I'm looking at the course that I'm seeing a map of, but this game just doesn't. Maybe if you watch the overhead map and shots that I take in the game footage, you can get an idea of what I mean. All the visuals of this game just feel incorrect to me. I'll be honest, making individual videos about games like this and the next game in the series, which is a weird old tank simulator, actually feels kind of unfulfilling. But I'm still having fun with this project. I just wish doing this project didn't involve having to make content about games that definitely no one cares about. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be doing this series. I'd like to play every game in the library. But how worth it is it to make a video about a game like this? How many people are going to see this video? Or any of the videos that I make, actually? Should I be spending my time figuring out how to make better content with games people are more likely to care about? I don't know. I started this series because I love the Super Nintendo and wanted to catalog my thoughts on these games, and this has been a lot of fun up to this point. But making this particular video took me quite a long time because I just didn't want to make it? Because it didn't seem worth it? What makes the worth of each of these videos individually anyway? I guess that's a question only I can answer, but I don't know. I don't want to just stop making this project because it isn't performing well, because I think it's cool and interesting. But couldn't I be making something that's way more successful if I just put the work into actually trying to make something more successful than doing something that I definitely know isn't working as well as I'd like it to? I definitely don't know the answer to that question. But I don't think a game being 30 years old makes it bad. That's why I'm making this series in the first place. I'm sure there are plenty of Super Nintendo games I've never heard of that are going to be great that I may only play because I am making this series. Won't that make making this series worth it? Or should I just be trying to figure out how to make interesting compilation videos? I'm definitely never going to make a top 10 list, even though those are like the only Super Nintendo videos that perform well on YouTube. I'm not exactly sure what they thought they were doing to release this game when the True Golf Classics games and PGA Tour Golf already exist. Those games are way better than this game. My assumption is they didn't have a choice, like they contractually had to put something out. Just seems weird, to be honest. Anyways, if you enjoyed this existential crisis, please like the video. And if you like the idea of hearing me talk about old and obscure video games, please subscribe to my channel, as that's exactly what I do here. Next video in this series is going to be about Gary Kitchen Super Battle Tank, War in the Gulf. And that name is easily one of the worst names for a video game ever. So look forward to it. Have a great day!